Welcome to another episode of Ancient Asian Legends. I'm your host, Mei Li Soon. Today, we continue to follow Sun Wukong's journey as he meets the Jade Emperor for the first time and takes on his official assignment in heaven. This story is adapted from the original text of Journey to the West, written by Wu Cheng En in 1592. But that's not all. Stay tuned for our proverb of the day, infusing our narrative with timeless Asian wisdom. Without delay, let's dive into chapter five. Farewell, stable master. Hello, great sage. Chapter five. Farewell, stable master. Hello, great sage. In the presence of Tai Bai Jin Xing, Wu Kong, the monkey king, arrived outside the Lingxiao Palace. Without waiting for a royal decree, he proceeded directly to the imperial court, offering his respects. While Wu Kong stood upright nearby, he refrained from bowing and instead inclined his ear to listen attentively to Tai Bai Jin Xing's report. Tai Bai Jin Xing conveyed, I've executed the decree presenting the demon and immortal as commanded. From behind the curtain, the Jade Emperor inquired, Identify the demon and immortal. Wukong promptly proclaimed, It is I. The celestial officials were aghast, exclaiming, This audacious monkey refusing to bow and boldly stating, It is I. He deserves punishment. He deserves punishment. Then the Jade Emperor decreed, Sun Wukong, a demon and immortal from the mortal realm, newly inhabiting a human form, currently exhibits unfamiliarity with court etiquette. We therefore extend clemency for his transgressions at this time. The celestial officials expressed gratitude. The monkey king responded with a grand gesture of obeisance towards the heavens. The jade emperor proceeded with the selection of civil and military officials, actively observing ranks and assigning duties. He directed Sun Wukong to fill a vacant position. The minister of war turned to report, Within the heavenly palace, all palaces and halls, all regions and locales are adequately staffed. However, the role of overseeing the imperial stable remains vacant. The Jade Emperor decreed, Appoint him as the deputy stable master. The officials expressed thanks, and Sun Wukong actively acknowledged with another significant bow. Subsequently, the Jade Emperor tasked the Wood Virtue Star with escorting him to the Imperial Stable for duty. During this time, the Monkey King joyfully accompanied Tai Bai Jinxing to assume his new role. After completing the task, Tai Bai Jinxing returned to the palace. In the stable, he convened with the Chief Steward, Assistant Steward, Record Keeper, and stablemen to thoroughly review the stable's affairs. They uncovered a total of a thousand celestial horses. Each horse exuded power and spirit, displaying remarkable strength as they galloped like the wind, leapt through clouds, and showcased agile and forceful movements. These exceptional horses, one by one, thrived with vigor soaring through the skies and demonstrating enduring stamina. The Monkey King meticulously inspected the records, clearly outlining the number of horses. The record keeper took charge of sourcing forage, while the stablemen diligently groomed the horses, prepared food and water, and cooked the feed. The chief steward and assistant steward actively supported in overseeing and expediting the tasks. The deputy stable master worked tirelessly day and night, ensuring the horse's well-being. In the daytime, the horses played with vigor, while diligent caretakers maintained a watchful presence at night. Any horse caught sleeping was immediately awakened for a grazing session, and those wandering were guided towards the feeding trough. As the deputy stable master approached, the celestial horses actively perked their ears, gathered their hooves, and received meticulous care, resulting in their sleek and glossy coats. In a blink, more than half a month had passed. On a leisurely day, the various officials organized a banquet, 
intending to both welcome and congratulate the Monkey King. Amidst the festivities, the Monkey King abruptly paused, lifting his cup and asked, What kind of official title is Deputy Stable Master? The officials replied, That's the official title. What rank does this official hold? The crowd responded, It has no rank at all. No rank? It must be a high-ranking position. No, it's not significant. It's just called not entered into the system. Why is it called not entered into the system? The lowest ranking position. Its duties are limited to horse care. If the deputy stable master does an excellent job, ensuring the horses are well fed and robust, he receives praise. If any negligence is detected, there might be reprimands. For serious shortcomings, there are penalties, fines, and inquiries into possible crimes. Hearing this, the Monkey King couldn't contain his anger, furiously saying, Such contempt for me. I, the Monkey King, ruled over Hua Guo Shan Mountain, and now they try to deceive me into caring for their horses? Caring for horses is a task for the inexperienced, a lowly duty. How dare they treat me like this? I won't do it. I won't do it. I'm leaving. With a loud crash, he overturned the table, retrieved the golden hooped rod from his ear, gave it a shake, and transformed it to the thickness of a bowl. He angrily made his way through the imperial horse stable to reach the south heaven gate. The heavenly guards, aware that he possessed a divine edict, dared not to stop him. They allowed him to pass through the heavenly gate without hindrance. In an instant, he descended on a cloud, returning to Hua Guoshan Mountain. There, he found the four generals and various demon kings practicing military exercises. The monkey king loudly shouted, My children, I've returned! The monkeys all bowed, welcoming him into the depths of their mountain abode. They invited him to ascend the throne, and as they held a celebratory feast, they said, Congratulations, great king! After spending over ten years in the celestial realm, you must have returned in triumph, right? I've only been there for a little over half a month. How could it be over ten years? Great king, in the heavens, time flows differently. One day in heaven is equivalent to a year on earth. May we ask, great king, what position did you hold? The monkey king shook his head and said, It's embarrassing to say. Embarrassing to say. It's utterly humiliating. The jade emperor doesn't know how to use talent. Seeing me in my current state, he appointed me to some position like deputy stable master, intending for me to care for his horses, a position of no rank. I didn't know when I first took on the role, only fooling around in the stable. Just today I was chatting with my colleagues, and that's when I found out how messed up things were. It really ticked me off, so I flipped the table and said no to the official gig, ended up walking away from it all. The monkeys cheered. Well done, well done. Great king, you are our ruler in this blessed mountain abode, enjoying so much respect and happiness. How could you be willing to serve as a stable man for them? They instructed, Kids, quickly prepare more wine to lift the great king's spirits. Amidst the joyous celebration and feasting, a messenger arrived, announcing, Great king, two demon kings with singular horns await your audience outside. Allow them entry. The demon kings entered, adjusted their attire, and prostrated before the Monkey King. Inquiring, the Monkey King asked, What brings you here? One of the Demon Kings replied, Having long heard of the Great King's call for talent, we lack the means to meet you. Witnessing the Great King's heavenly recognition and glorious return, we present this vermilion robe in celebration. May the Great King accept it and kindly welcome us. We are willing to serve as loyal subjects, working like dogs and horses to assist you. Delighted, the Monkey King donned the vermilion robe. The assembled demons gladly arranged themselves to pay homage, and the Monkey King appointed the Demon Kings as vanguard commanders. Expressing his gratitude, the Demon Kings then inquired, Great King, having been in heaven for a while, what position were you granted? The Monkey King replied, The Jade Emperor undervalued me and appointed me to a position called Deputy Stable Master. Upon hearing this, one of the demon kings suggested, With your extraordinary abilities, why settle for caring for horses? Let's bestow upon you the title of great sage equal to heaven. How about that? Overjoyed, the monkey king exclaimed, Excellent! 
Excellent, excellent. He instructed his four generals. Quickly prepare a flag with the inscription, Great Sage Equal to Heaven, and hoist it on a pole. From now on, address me only as the Great Sage Equal to Heaven. No longer refer to me as the Great King. Spread this message to all the demon kings in the various caves, so they are all aware. The following day, Zhang the Celestial Master, accompanied by the deputy and assistant deputy of the imperial stable, bowed and reported to the imperial court, Long live the emperor, Sun Wukong, the newly appointed deputy stable master, dissatisfied with his humble position, departed from the heavenly palace yesterday. While this was being discussed, another report arrived from the South Heaven Gate, where the heavenly king and celestial soldiers reported. Deputy Stable Master, for unknown reasons, has left through the southern gate. Upon hearing this, the Jade Emperor immediately issued an edict. Summon the two divine forces back to their respective duties. Mobilize the heavenly army to capture this monster. Commander Li Jing, known as the pagoda-bearing heavenly king, and the third prince Neja, stepped forward, offering... Long live the emperor, this humble servant requests permission to subdue this demon. Delighted, the Jade Emperor appointed Li Jing as the Grand Marshal for Demon Subjugation and Ne Jia as the Great God of the Three Altars, swiftly assembling the heavenly forces to descend to the mortal realm. Li Jing and Ne Jia expressed their gratitude and immediately went into their respective palaces. They raised three armies, led by the giant spirit god in the vanguard, the fish-bellied general in the rear, and the medicine fork commander to marshal the forces. In no time, they arrived outside the southern heaven gate and proceeded straight to Hua Guoshan Mountain. Choosing a suitable flat and open area, they set up their military camp and ordered the giant spirit god to issue a challenge. Following orders, the giant spirit god, with his battle array arranged, wielding the flower fan axe, arrived at the entrance of the water curtain cave. Outside the small cave, many demons, resembling wolves, worms, tigers, and leopards, brandished spears and swords, engaged in a tumultuous dance, and roared fiercely. The giant spirit god shouted, You beasts! Hurry up and inform Deputy Stable Master. I am a celestial general sent by the Jade Emperor to subdue this place. Tell him to surrender early, avoiding harm to all of you. The demon scattered to report to the cave, shouting, Trouble! Trouble! The Monkey King commanded, Bring my armor! Bedazzled in resplendent golden armor and crowned with majestic purple gold, the Monkey King skillfully wields the compliant golden hooped rod with unyielding confidence. Navigating in the cloud stepping shoes, his steps showcase both agility and nimbleness. His eyes, distinct and luminous, shimmer like stars scattered across the night sky. Towering tall and unyielding, his ears extend beyond his shoulders, radiating robust power. His imposing figure, characterized by both height and versatility, emits an aura of perpetual transformation. With a voice resonating like the tolling of a bell, he establishes a presence that keenly anticipates the imminent unfolding of greatness. Giant Spirit God shouted loudly, You troublesome monkey, do you recognize me? The great sage, equal to heaven, upon hearing this, urgently asked, Which deity are you? I haven't met you before. Quickly reveal your name. Giant Spirit God sneered. You treacherous monkey. Clearly you're oblivious to me. I am the Giant Spirit God, the frontline warrior under General Lee's command from the heavenly realm. Today I'm here by the Jade Emperor's decree to crush you. Hurry up and shed your deceitful facade. Surrender to heavenly mercy or these mountain creatures will meet their doom. If you so much as breathe a word of defiance, I'll reduce you to powder in the blink of an eye. Will Wukong defeat the giant spirit god? Tune in to the next episode of Ancient Asian Legends. And after a short break, we have a proverb of the day for you.
Today's proverb of the day is the following. Comfort nurtures idleness, adversity forges brilliance. This proverb conveys the idea that when life is comfortable and easy, people may become lazy or complacent. On the other hand, when faced with challenges or adversity, individuals are more likely to tap into their potential and demonstrate exceptional abilities. Essentially, it highlights the contrast between a comfortable, easygoing situation and a challenging one, suggesting that the latter often brings out the best in people, pushing them to develop and showcase their talents. Embrace the challenges life presents you. They are your chance to grow and emerge even stronger on the other side. That's it for our proverb of the day. Comfort nurtures idleness. Adversity forges brilliance. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Ancient Asian Legends. Today's episode was adapted and translated by Mei Li Soon, with original music by Studio Columna, Coma Media, and Jeff Harvey. If you enjoyed this episode, consider sharing the joy with others. Find Ancient Asian Legends on social media for more proverbs of the day. Will Wukong defeat the giant spirit god? What challenges will the pagoda-bearing heavenly king throw his way? Join us in the next Ancient Asian Legends for more magic. Until then, take care and stay enchanted. Mm -hmm.